quiet luxury is the loudest trending topic right now. What's that about? Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Shakura and I believe that when you feel good, you look good. So on this channel, I show you how to take fashion and use it as a tool to help you look and feel your best. If you follow me on my community page, you knew that I was gonna make a video about this and a lot of you had a lot of things to say and I could not wait to film this video. The topic of quiet luxury is everywhere on my For You page on TikTok. I've seen plenty of YouTube videos about it. I've even run into articles that claim that there are quiet luxury brands. They named Victoria Beckham as a quiet luxury brand, Tatcha, Lilabo, and even Dior for a quiet luxury beauty brand. I've also run into an article like this one that goes into depth about how to have a quiet luxury home design. Just that phrase is everywhere on the internet now. But what exactly is quiet luxury? Before we get into that and get the definitions, let's play a quick game. So for this game, I'm going to give you four different scenarios. Each scenario, you would choose the outfit that you would wear. Now, while all of these might not be your taste or your personal style, um, and maybe none of them are your personal style, Pick the one that you would wear if you absolutely had to. Try to remember the number that correlates with each scenario that you picked, and then we'll tally it up at the end. If you picked A, you get one point. B would be two point. C will be three point. The first scenario is that you have won a trip to Paris, and you are extremely excited. You have never been and you want to see everything. The Louvre, the Eiffel Tower, the Opera House. You may even go shopping at Galleries Lafayette. You want to be comfortable because you will be walking around all day. But you also want to look cute. You have read a lot of What to Wear in Paris articles, but you chose to stick to your own style. Which outfit are you most likely to wear? Choose A, B, or C and give yourself the appropriate point. Your brother is having a surprise dinner party planned by his significant other. You had nothing to do with the planning process. You have never been to the restaurant and you really don't know the vibe. All you know is that the food is supposed to be good. Your sibling's significant other tells you that the dress code is cute but very casual. Which outfit are you most likely to wear? Use A, B, or C. Scenario three, you are about to get engaged. You have been dating someone for about two years. You can't see living your life without them. You often dream about how your wedding will look and what a great parent you will be. You and your significant other recently made plans to go out for date night, and for some reason you feel like they're going to pop the question. So obviously you want to look your best. Which outfit are you most likely to choose? A, B, or C? Well, you were right. They did pop the question. You're now married and you have three beautiful children. But now you have to do school pickup. You want to look as put together as possible because the other parents are super judgmental. Last year, you found out that the parents were talking about you and how you look a mess coming to get your kids from school. You found out about the whole situation. You had some choice words for a few parents. Things got a little ugly. One thing led to another and you were banned for school pickup from the last month of the school year. Your children were embarrassed and devastated. This year, you just want to come in, get your child and leave without embarrassing them. Which outfit are you most likely to choose?
Remember, A is one point, B is two points, and C is three points. Add them all together, write it down, or remember it because we're coming back to that whole situation later. L define quiet luxury as new age minimalism with a large focus on investment pieces and thoughtful shopping habits. L Canada define quiet luxury by saying it's the opposite of logo mania. Instead, quiet luxury champions a more toned down, minimalistic look, highlighting understated pieces, high quality fabrics, and tailored cuts. This style embodies refined sophistication sprinkled with the delicate notes of opulence. And that word opulence is a very interesting word to me because Webster's Dictionary defines opulent as affluent and wealthy and then goes on to say that these words mean having an abundance of property and, and other goods, right? Then it goes on to say that opulent suggests a display of great wealth. So it's very interesting that they put quiet luxury and opulent together. I thought that was an interesting word choice, but I digress. <laughs> Business Insider explained that quiet luxury is defined as clothing of the highest quality, but also clothing that has timelessness, is sophisticated and understated. So is this a trend, a fad, an aesthetic, or an ideology? According to Flair Magazine, quiet luxury has been around for centuries. With its roots traced back to the Renaissance era in Italy, the wealthy and the elite would commission fine arts and craftsmen to create bespoke garments and accessories that were unique, personalized, and of exceptional quality. So since it's been around for centuries, we know that quiet luxury is not a trend, right? It can't be a trend. It's had immense staying power. Women's Wear Daily said that modern quiet luxury is minimalist shape, neutral colors, tailored suiting and invisible branding. Is that an aesthetic? And while we know from our earlier definition that the quiet luxury crowd loves quality peace that will last a lifetime and they believe that that just looks better than a body full of logos. Is that an ideology? But why quiet luxury? Why now? There are a few different theories, right? The first theory, which I think is very interesting, is a response to the state of the world right now. Dopamine dressing was one of the biggest trends when we came out of the pandemic. Because we were stuck in the house all this time, all we wanted to do is put on everything and look fabulous and everything that made us happy. So some folks think because we are in a cost of living crisis, minimal is better because some people can't afford fancy things with logos. And the folks that can don't want to stick out and don't want to be read as tone deaf. And since we are now living in a world where eggs were $9, and I saw an article the other day where somebody tried to Klarna their electric bill, it may come off as insensitive and just not the right time to be wearing a, a ton of logos. A very similar thing happened during the Great Recession. Minimalism was a big trend then as well. Other folks believe that it's just part of the fashion cycle. We have been going very hard with the Y2K fashion. And then if you look at the fashion cycle, the next thing that came up after Y2K was minimalism. Other folks believe that it is a direct response to people of color now being able to afford luxury goods. And it's a way to keep people of color outside of the luxury space and completely outside of the fashion conversation. Because people of color tend to be louder with our fashion choices, it would distance us from this now superior trend or trending topic. Some of those folks even believe that the idea of minimalism and quiet luxury and beige and black and white is a very American idea. And the whole idea of old money is rooted in elitism. A Los Angeles-based stylist who works on Secession was quoted as saying, the idea that the ultra wealthy wear beige and other neutrals is rooted in American culture. I am a first generation American and Indian by heritage. In my culture, wealth is associated with bright colors that are loud, bold, beautiful, and bright. That's just part of our culture and rich heritage. There are also many African countries that are culturally similar to India in that way. 
where wealth and opulence is associated with bright, beautiful colors when it comes to fashion. The idea of minimalism being associated with wealth is a very American perspective. And just to add to that, not only in India and certain countries in Africa is color something that is sought after, it's also in South America, in the Caribbean, and right here at home for African American culture. Colors in these cultures not only signify wealth, but it's prosperity and happiness and love and joy. Now, I believe that all three of these theories can be true. Fashion is very often dictated by the state of the world. The fashion trend cycle is pretty darn dependable and fashion does have a history of not only excluding people of color, but also appropriating our culture. Now, wearing simple clothing that you perceive as chic is fantastic. Buying quality pieces that will last a lifetime is ideal. I certainly can appreciate a minimal look. I kind of have one on right now, right? I certainly can appreciate a minimal look with clean lines. However, associating that look with old money, I have a huge problem with. According to this article, old money refers to the subset of people whose wealth has been inherited as a pulse to made by themselves. They are typically white families who first moved to America from the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant group. Old money is elitist. It refers to money made from the exploitation and the exclusion of others. Families like the Vanderbilts, the Rockefellers, the Koch's have all have gotten old money and have been accused of exploiting others. For example, according to this article, the Koch family caught stealing oil from Native American reservation in 1988. Koch family actions reduced or eliminated the incomes of many reservation residents. When evidence emerged proving the theft, the Koch brothers evaded punishment by paying an undisclosed amount to settle the case. So please forgive me if I don't want to associate old money with the way I dress. People of color were tortured and terrorized for this old money. I want absolutely nothing to do with that phrase. Honestly, I think one of the worst parts of the whole old money conversation is that those people have the tendency to look down on people that have the new money aesthetic. They call it tacky and it's just terrible. I actually did a video a while back that I will link in the description box about the origins of the word tacky. And after doing the research for that video, it actually honestly opened my eyes. I'll leave that in the description box and you can go take a look. I think really what I'm trying to understand is that why are the 99% most of us, the middle class, trying to emulate the 1%? It's not gonna make us rich. We're not gonna get more money for it. It's not better because we know the history of them. Why do we care about them? They definitely won't let us into their spaces, particularly if you are a person of color. And what's so wrong with dressing like your middle class? That's most of us, isn't it? I have been very privileged enough in my life to be able to grow up around many different cultures. I've also been privileged enough in my life uh, for my parents and my family to work hard, to send me to private school, to where I was in spaces um, that people that were much different than my family economically, and people that obviously, like I said, had different cultures. And I've also worked as an adult in private schools. Let me just tell you guys, they are even thinking about us, okay? So while we are teaching our kids that this is how rich people dress, and we're telling each other this is what we should do because the rich people do it, they are in no way educating their children or themselves about the plight of the middle class person. My brother at some point used to tutor for a wealthy family. And during one of their tutoring sessions, the little boy looked at him and said, do you know that some people only have one house? <laughs> True story. And then on another occasion, I was teaching in the private school and we were getting ready for summer vacation and we were all sharing our summer plans. And I was telling the kids that I was gonna go back to Europe and I was spending time there and I was gonna be in Paris and I was going to be in Italy and all these great things I was doing that year. And one of the kids raised their hands and asked me, well, do you have a house inside of Paris or outside? 
because my parents have and then they inserted wherever their house was. Now, in no way is it this their kid's fault because this is how they're being brought up, but the rich folks are not caring about what we do. They're not teaching these kids about that. I don't understand why we care and put so much effort into what rich people do. It actually boggles my mind. There are more of us than there are of them. It's strange. Most of us are middle class and that is okay. So before you look down on somebody who has that new money aesthetic, I ask you to reserve your judgment and ask yourself three questions. One, is their outfit hurting you in any way besides your eyes? Is it hurting you? Is it possible that what they're wearing actually brings them joy? Because isn't that what fashion is about anyway? Being happy and showing your personality? The third question is, why does that aesthetic bother you so much? What about it makes you have this reaction? Personal style is made up of so many things, but paramount among those things are culture, environment, and personality. We have to let people get dressed and live their life without judgment. Honestly, if we all dressed the same, it would be so lame. And I've said that before. Can you imagine if we all looked exactly alike i mean with bloggers and influencers we kind of all do at this point <laughs> but can you imagine that it would be even worse i for one am here for the diversity as you could tell in my videos i try to include different cultures different races different body types i love a bit of diversity so do you see yourself participating in quiet luxury and in what capacity remember that game we played earlier that will give you a little bit of insight into where you fall on the quiet luxury spectrum. The lower the number, the most likely you are to participate in this trending topic right now, because we know it's not a trend. The higher you scored, you're most likely not even to look at that, and you don't even have time to even deal with this whole quiet luxury situation. So if you got a four, that means you are all into the quiet luxury. And if you got a 12, I don't even know why you're watching this video because you could care less about this trending topic. So will I be participating in quiet luxury? I have got to put my own spit on it. Do love a quality item. I will definitely be incorporating better quality things into my closet. I've told you before that I love straight lines. I love a blazer. That's really part of something that I've always loved. I can't promise you about the no color thing. I do love neutrals, but let me tell you something. It would be a waste to have all this melanin and not put some orange and some fuchsia and some yellow on this here melanin. I, I can't make that promise. So I will be participating in my own way. I do love a classy, jazzy kind of style. If you watch this video, you know what I'm talking about. Sophisticated, it's classy, but it's also a little fun. And like I said, because personal style is from culture, environment, and personality, when I get dressed, whatever I'm wearing, you will know that I am a black woman born and raised in New York, so I might have on some big hoop earrings. <laughs> you will also know that my heritage is from the Caribbean, so I'm most likely gonna have a little bit of color or something little fun on. My personal style will be all up and through this quiet luxury thing. <laughs> And I don't even know if that's still considered quiet luxury, but I'm gonna do what I do and I'm gonna do it like I always do. You know, this actually makes me think of a clip I recently saw on TikTok. And Tom Ford was once asked, What happens, Tom, if you see a woman or a man walking down the street in one of your designs and you don't like it? Oh, but I'm still happy they bought it because most often I can see that they love it and they feel so good. And that's what it's about. It's not me saying, oh, you can't wear this because you don't look at it. Or it's about giving other people pleasure and making them feel the best versions of themselves. So I get really excited. What I actually don't like to see is when they're wearing it head to toe, the way I've shown it on a runway. Surprisingly, I don't like that because I like when people have their own sense of style and they take what you do and they integrate it and it becomes part of who they are rather than, I always feel a little sad when I see people decked out because I think, oh, she doesn't really know who she is. She's just buying, or he, just buying a look right off the, and they don't really know who they are. And to you, I ask, 
who are you? Will you be participating in this trending topic or will you be taking bits and pieces from quiet luxury like me that will suit your personal style? Let's get some conversation going in the comments. I would love to know your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, like, comment, subscribe, share the video, and I will see you in my next video.